Hi everyone. It is May 29, 2018. I don't know if you have noticed that mainstream media is doing a lot of segments on the 5G. Oh, those fast downloads. Can't wait, can't wait. They do mention that there are possible health concerns, but then they mention that more studies prove that this technology is safe. Well, those studies are industry-funded studies. The millimeter wave, that is the 5G, the frequency band. That's a military frequency band. Why are they installing a military, the millimeter wave, that the military has been using? Well, it will allow for the Internet of Things to take shape, but it will also allow greater surveillance of each and every one of us. With the millimeter wave, they will be able to see inside your homes. When you're walking down the street, they will be able to scan everything that is on your body, in your purse, in your briefcase, with high definition resolution. I posted this video on my Never Lose Truth to Kafka backup channel. Telecom industry hid data on cell phones causing brain tumors, lied about safety. And yes, it's 48 minutes long. It was a very long article in which I read most of it because this is very important information. This was an investigation that the Nation magazine, uh, the, well, the article is based on a investigation that the Nation published. How Big Wireless made us think that cell phones are safe, a special investigation. The disinformation campaign and massive radiation increase behind the 5G rollout. Funny that this has not gotten much play. Well, it needs to. And I'm just going to very briefly go over some of this information. Tom Wheeler. Yes, this Tom Wheeler. Our former FCC chairman, Federal Communications Commission chairman, he announces the 5G rollout. In this announcement, he even says, we're not going to wait for regulations. We're not going to wait for safety. We're rolling it out now. Why? Because it's going to create billions and billions of dollars for industry. And that's damn important. That's what he says. No kidding. I'll link below to everything. Tom Wheeler. Well, who was Tom Wheeler? He was the president of Cellular Telecommunications and Internet Association. He's a revolving door guy. Wheeler was the wireless industry's point man in Washington. Yes, every Every agency, every commission, the corruption is so in our face, and we Americans are just doing nothing about it. All right, cell phones. They were allowed onto the U.S. consumer market without any government safety testing. Got it? No safety testing. Those cell phones that we're all using were not tested for safety. Okay. In January 1993, a man named David Reynard sued the NEC America company claiming that his wife's phone caused her lethal brain tumor. And after Reynard appeared on national TV, the story went viral. A congressional subcommittee announced an investigation and investors began dumping their cell phone stocks. And Wheeler and the, uh, what's it called? Man, I don't have a brain anymore. 
the cellular telecommunications and internet association they just they got on it they got on it one week after Reynard's story went viral Wheeler announced that his industry would pay for a comprehensive research program cell phones he announced were already safe but Wheeler told reporters that new research that we will conduct, we allowed industry to conduct the studies. <gasps> oh, we are schmucks. But he told them that the new research would simply revaluate, revalidate, sorry, the findings of the existing studies. They or Wheeler chose George Carlo an epidemiologist who had already conducted studies for Dow Corning. Yeah, industry funding, chemical industry funding. And Carlo had already declared that breast implants posed minimal health risks. And he even found the chemical behind the Agent Orange scandal safe. So, who do you go to if you want your studies to reflect what you want them to reflect? You go to that guy, George Carlo. The, uh, the industry gave Carlo $28.5 million. It was the best funded investigation of cell phone safety to date. But industry was funding it. So, what what are their results going to be? They're not going to publish results that prove that the frequencies from cell phones are dangerous. So they chose Carlo. And they expected silent obedience. But Carlo, he went off the script and by 1999, the study, the uh, what, the wireless, 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 tele, uh, wireless technology research project, that's what it was called. Carla was heading. The studies began in 1995. By 1990, they had 50 original studies, had reviewed many more. And those studies raised serious questions about cell phone safety. And in a closed door meeting, Carlo told the cellular telecommunications and industry, uh, in internet, sorry, internet association, board of directors, whose members included the CEOs or top officials of the industry's 32 leading companies including Apple, AT&T, Motorola, Motorola. Well, he told them that there's a risk of rare tumors on the outside of the brain. Studies prove that it, those tumors had doubled in cell phone users and that the phone's antenna causes functional genetic damage. So, the industry, Tom Wheeler, they all went after Carlo. You can read this article and find out exactly how industry corrupts science. And these industry-funded studies are useless because there are so many conflicts of interest. The investigation which you can read about right here. You can read about how they, with money, just bribed an awful lot of people to keep silent about the dangers of this technology. Every industry does it. So what did they do to Carlo? They destroyed him, as industry does. They discredit discredit the scientists that come out and say this causes cancer 
This causes tumors. This causes genetic damage. And if you want to not read it, and you can listen to me reading most of it, click on the link below. This is on the Environmental Health Trust's website. You can read, and this is from the telecommunication companies, their websites, which you can't find on the websites anymore, but Environmental Health Trust captured them and posted them on their website, and you will read why insurance companies refuse to insure for any damage associated with cell phones, frequencies, no insurance whatsoever. But you'll hear Verizon, we are subject to a significant amount of lit litigation which could require us to pay significant damages or settlements. Blackberry, same thing. Vodafone, AT&T, China Mobile, General Communication Incorporated, American Tower Corporation, even the, the company that installs the cell phone towers. Our costs could increase and our revenues could decrease due to perceived health risks from radio emissions, especially if these perceived risks are substantiated, and guess what? They have been, but industry has so much money. And we are now living a time where Americans, they, they most don't care about their own health. They love their technology. I don't care if I get cancer. And they don't care about their kids. They're keeping their kids quiet with iPads and video games and, and what else? Perhaps Alexa. Here. Okay, Alexa, Echo, these uh, gadgets, the virtual assistants. Information regarding exposure to radio frequency energy. This device should be installed and operated with a minimum distance of 20 centimeters between the radiator and your body. But do parents, I, I, it's, it's stunning. Look at this. the kids busy. Okay, look at this. Look at this. It is right on her chest. She is literally just embracing it with her whole body. It's right near her face. Dangerous frequencies being emitted into this child. And yes, I am going to say this. I have spoken to many parents. There is a grandmother here who, well, Recycling is her thing, and she is adamant about recycling. Why? Because she does not want to leave this world with that global warming and climate change and all of you know the plastic bottles in the ocean. I'm not saying that that is not real, but that's the only thing that she does because she cares about her grandchildren so much she recycles. When I spoke to her about these gadgets that her grandson, he was given these like an iPad and he plays violent video games from starting at the age of three. He's now five. He has ADHD, which these frequencies can cause. 
He has ADHD, so they give him an upper during the day, and they give him a downer at night. And he, I, I went to throw some garbage out the other night, and it was pretty well dark. The grandmother, another neighbor, and this five-year-old child were sitting, and I'm walking, and the only thing that I can see is this green light illuminating this little, little child sitting in a chair, knees up to his chest, but this gadget was literally like maybe six inches from his face. And I told that grandmother about these frequencies and how dangerous they are, especially for, for children, because their skull is still soft, undeveloped, their brain, the frequencies, crossed the blood, I told her it all, crossed the blood-brain barrier. They're far more dangerous for children than adults. Did she do any research? No. Did she care? No. Why? Because that child, she wasn't burdened. She could just go on talking to the neighbor, and that child was just consumed with that gadget, with this game. I sat down with them for a little while, and I pulled my chair away from where this kid was, because I don't want to be sitting around these gadgets. And the minute I sat down away from him, he got up and he started pulling his chair and he literally pulled it to so close that it was touching my chair. And I had to explain to him that, you know, I the lighting on it was just too much for me. So I pulled my chair away again. He started pulling his chair towards me again. And his grandmother yelled at him. So he sat down and he was playing. And then about 10 minutes later, he started pulling his chair again towards me. And his grandmother yelled at him again. And he just looked at his grandmother and he said, I just want to be close to someone. And my heart broke. The damage that they are doing to this child is so um, heartbreaking, but looking at that grandmother, I not tell I, I did not tell her just once. I told her several times about the dangers of these frequencies. She but I'm going to recycle because I love my grandchildren. Really. And you're going to give them, at five years old, speed. And then you're going to give them a downer so that child can sleep. And you're going to let that kid not only play with these dangerous gadgets, you're going to sit there and let him play violent video games. And this kid apparently said to his grandmother at one point, I'm going to kill you when you're sleeping, Grandma. Parenting. Grandparenting. Something is very wrong here. You know, it's not just the schools and it's not just government. It's parents destroying their own children. So, I will link below to it all, and you can read all about how these, yeah, so many were worried about litigation costs. All right. Um, listen to Tom Wheeler. Listen to this video if you have not. Now, the 5G wireless technology, millimeter wave health effects, and the health effects are, I have a playlist, and I'm going to get to that playlist. Where is it? Here. 
Okay, you go to my channel, you click on playlist or click on playlist and click on 5G microwave frequencies, Wi Fi, health effects. And in several of my videos that are on this list, and why couldn't I get to the full list page? Let me try it again. Um, come on. Here it is. I have 108 or 9 videos, 108 or 9 videos, um, and well, some have been deleted, unfortunately. I posted a lot on 5G, and in I think two of my videos, I posted on what the mili military can do with these frequencies. And these frequencies, the millimeter wave, these are the frequencies that they use for riot control. So they will be able to create fences, invisible fences, especially with this intensive structure. You're going to have cell antennas all over outside your home, on your lamp posts, on your um, on your lights outside, your stop lights, your traffic lights, they're going to be all over. If they want to raise those frequencies to keep let's say a whole community isolated, they can do it. They can prevent you from going anywhere. They can prevent you from travel. They can seal off whole neighborhoods with these frequencies. Um, I the, the infrastructure is close to complete. And what did our Congress do? They passed legislation that blocks the rights of local governments and their citizens to control the installation of cellular antennas. Our Congress, our politicians do not represent you, the American citizens. They represent corporations. They have for decades, and my God, nothing could be clearer today that we are not being represented. We've got a Congress, we've got a House, we've got a Senate. We've got those who you think you vote for and they represent you. They get into Congress and they propose legislation. You think they have drafted the legislation. The lobbyists of corporations have drafted the legislation, they hand it to some representative in the House, and they propose it. You're watching a staged game. Now, 5G. What is the problem with 5G? This is Dr. Dr. Devra Davis, who founded Environmental Health Trust. I will link below to her channel where she has some very important, very important information. The National Toxicology Program Study, which was funded by our National Institute of Health and other federal agencies, their findings cancer and the 5G is only going to make everything worse. So Dr. Devra Davis, I think she was nominated for a Nobel. Oh, she is highly respected. I believe she's an epidemiologist, but I'm not sure. But listen to what she has to say right after 
she is talking about our children our children need to be protected we now know that the skin our largest organ does respond to 5g and in fact we have in our sweat ducts they can act as antennas that can receive signals now this has not been tested for safety the fact that it can interact with our sweat ducts may have much more profound meanings for our overall health and well-being the idea that we're going to saturate this country with a network that has never been tested is appalling and i am joining with many other scientists from around the world now to express concerns and to say we must evaluate these things before we roll out the technology no matter how attractive it is for us to have faster downloads of video games pornography or virtual reality the question we have to ask ourselves is it worth endangering the health of our children to do that okay um did you see the camera going in and out of focus I believe that was the pulsating frequencies causing that. So, there are so many scientists around the world with every issue that we are facing today, every agenda. Climate change, global warming, scientists all over the world disputing those uh, studies but these frequencies are causing so well it's on my channel and now we have these ultra low frequencies that seem to be going off on a regular basis and the ultra low frequencies also emit uh, dangerous microwave frequencies so we have them from Gwent Towers and Doppler radar and cell towers and all of our gadgets and now our smart appliances smart meters we're in trouble we're in big trouble all right here the latest this was posted today CBS New York 5G wireless Service is coming, and so are health concerns over the towers that support it. And they waffle. These are not journalists. They don't investigate. They get their script, and they read. They read it. It's fast as 3G networks, so you can download faster on your smartphone than Verizon. With 4G from Sprint, I can download files up to 10 times faster than 3G. Upload 10 photos in a minute. Verizon 4G LTE. Get ready for more ads like those. The wireless industry is in a race to roll out 5G service. Now, 5G is supposed to be up to 100 times faster than current data speeds. Could have used it on Amtrak yesterday. But it requires cell phone tower equipment to be closer to users than ever before. And that is causing outrage and alarm in some neighborhoods as antennas go up around the homes. Tony DeCoppo is here with both sides of the conversation. Tony, lots of chatter about this. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. There's outrage, which is also excitement. I mean, yeah. 100 times faster. But get this, wireless... Okay, you know what? It's, it's kind of like <laughs> we've become... Uh, drug addicts, alcoholics. Oh, there's excitement about a substance that will kill you. The, the mentality of Americans, it, it's so scary. And I know that it's not just Americans, but that's kind of where I live, so that's my focus. My God. Companies in the U.S. say they'll have to install about 300,000 new antennas for the rollout of 5G. That is roughly equal to the total number of cell phone towers built over the past three decades. The faster network could create new potential for work and play, but it's also leading to new concerns. <laughs> At a lab in New York, Verizon invited us to meet some of the entrepreneurs developing tools to run on the next generation of wireless technology. How important is 5G to your mission? I'm sorry, it just started pouring raining. Uh, pouring rain. So I hope you can still hear it. In fact, that, that is pretty much all I wanted you to hear. It, hear. Um, they interview a couple of people and 
there are people who are very concerned. One woman says, when those 5G cell antennas go up outside my home, I, I may have to move. Um, another one talks about how uh, it will devalue your property. And then they end with a very happy American, oh, I can't wait for it. I can't wait. I can't wait. Can't wait. Listen to this. This is a NASA scientist who clearly has no brain in his head. That putting up these cell phones, cell phone towers is safe. But the International Association of Firefighters disagrees. They began opposing cell towers on fire stations after firefighters complained of health problems. These firefighters developed symptoms. Dr. Gunnar Heuser conducted a pilot study on firefighters at a station with cell towers. And the symptoms included problems with memory, problems with intermittent confusion, problems with weakness. Heuser says their brain scan suggests even low-level RS can cause cell damage, and he worries about more vulnerable groups like kids. So we found abnormal brain function in all of the firefighters we examined. So, following lobbying by firefighters, Cork and his co-author exempted fire stations from their bill, making them one place cell companies couldn't put a tower. This is oh, so the firefighters, based on the studies, they were exempted from these antennas. Interesting, isn't it? Okay, and yet an ordinary American, they can't exempt themselves from getting an, an antenna right smack outside their home. So, the rain and the thunder, I don't know if you heard it, has, um, I'm just going to end by telling you that all of this information will be linked to below. I certainly hope that you circulate, circulate the videos. Please check out the videos on my playlist and please, can you, there is so much information out there that needs to be circulated. And I can't stand seeing Environmental Health Trust with only 2,000 subscribers and the low view numbers on exceedingly important videos. These scientists who were involved with this national toxicology program and they coming out and saying, you will have heart damage, you will have cancer and tumors. And we have 86 views, heart damage, when exposed to cell phone radiation, brain cancer, 78 views. We all have to chip in. We all have to just do what we can to get this information out. Thank you for watching. And guys, listen, if you still have Wi-Fi, I sure do hope that you get rid of it and hardwire your internet. If you can opt out of your smart meter, which are exceedingly dangerous. In fact, uh, I had a video and it's on Environmental Tr Health Trust's um, channel. It's Dr. Martin Paul, who is also speaking out about the dangers. There's so many doctors speaking out about the dangers of this wireless environment that has manifested and we're all getting sick by it. But this short video, it's only two minutes, Martin Paul, right here. I'm gonna play it for you. And I sure hope you listen closely. Smart meters. I'm, I'm Martin Paul. I'm a professor uh, emeritus at Washington State University. I live in Portland, Oregon. I've been giving talks on EMF effects 
one just recently in New Haven. I'll be giving two talks uh, shortly in Spain. Um, so, uh, so I and I published six papers on how electromagnetic fields impact the cells of our bodies. Um, uh, so, what what I'm going to do? So, my my comments are going to be focused specifically on smart meters. Um, there are many different health effects that have been extensively documented as being caused by EMFs. Uh, most of them have never been looked at with smart meters, but three of them have been, and they've all been uh, reported to be occurring at very substantial levels in response to smart meters. And those are that they're widespread neuropsychiatric effects. Uh, there are cardiac effects on the, the, the electrical control of the heart. Those are life-threatening because the arrhythmias that occur uh, can uh, be, uh, are often associated with sudden cardiac death. Uh, and then finally, there's electromagnetic hypersensitivity, uh, which is, has just been uh, referred to. Uh, those three have all been uh, reported to occur in response to smart meters. Now, the smart meters were put out, as are all wireless communication devices, without any biological testing whatsoever, safety testing whatsoever. Uh, the the uh, guarantees of safety that the industry has put forth is based on an assumption that only thermal, that is only heating effects can occur. And there's been data uh, from thousands of studies uh, going all the way back to the 1950s that that's not true. Okay, that there are many non-thermal effects, including the three that I just talked about. Uh, so, uh, so I think there is, should be no question that uh, that smart meters have biological effects. Uh, now, there's some other issues here that are important. One is the pulse fields, the fields that pulse up and down, are much more biologically active in most cases than non-pulse fields or continuous wave fields. Uh, smart meters are highly pulsed. And therefore, they are they are problematic for that reason as well. All right, so I'm going to leave you there. You can click on all of the links below. I apologize for the rain and the thunder, the noise. But yes, cell phones pulse their frequencies. Smart meters pulse their frequencies. And that makes them more biologically active. It makes them, those frequencies go in, into your body affecting every cell in your body with dangerous pulses. So, God, I wish we could get back to how we used to live. Anyway, all links are below.